Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're beginning our celebration of the second re-re-re-release in the Halo franchise, Halo 2. The only way that we know how, by taking a deep dive into its lore. To mark the beginning of this dive, I thought we'd conduct an incredibly thorough investigation. I think quite possibly the most thorough out there right now into one of the most interesting and actually in hindsight, most cataclysmic elements of its story. The Covenant heretics, their leader, their accidental use of the Flood, how they ultimately fractured the Covenant, and how they inspired others across the galaxy to muster up arms against the Hierarchs. So if you're new around here and you want to stay up to date with all of Halo's lore in the run up to Halo Infinite, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also go and follow me over on Twitch as well. We've been having so much fun over there. Fun and suffering, but mostly fun. If you don't, then maybe I'll, uh, I don't know, accidentally weaponize the flood as well. So, the story of the heretics and their leader begins long before the Arbiter was sent to quell their heresy. During the war on Alpha Halo that takes place during Halo Combat Evolved, the Arbiter, or as he was known then, Thel Vadimi, was the supreme commander of the fleet of particular justice that followed the Pillar of Autumn to the ring. However, all was not well within this glorious fleet. A power struggle was underway. Upon the discovery of the Halo, the Prophet of Stewardship, a minor prophet assigned to the fleet, attempted to usurp Thel claiming the mission was now a religious matter and attempting to claim total control of the war effort, something that Thel spent most of his time at the Halo trying to prevent. As a part of this usurping effort, following the release of the Flood on the Halo, the Prophet sent an expeditionary force to an ancient foreigner gas mine in the atmosphere of Threshold, the planet of which Alpha Halo orbited. This team would be led by two elite warriors, Loka Bandoli, and one Caesar Rethame. Now, Thel wholeheartedly disagreed with this and even attempted to stop the team from going by issuing a transmission that demanded all military forces be concentrated on the human threat posed to the Halo. But nonetheless, the expedition went ahead, but little did the Prophet know. By ordering it, he just set in motion events that would bring an end to his beloved covenant. Caesar, Loka, and the Covenant would spend some time on the gas mine, exploring it, investigating its terminals and consoles, and gathering whatever artifacts and knowledge they could find that their gods left behind to bring back to the Hierarchs, until something absolutely cataclysmic happened. Out of one of the windows of the mine, the Halo, the holiest, most sacred relic in the entire Covenant, was obliterated, shattered into a hundred pieces, its carcass left drifting through space. Fearful, but knowing they were deserving of the retribution the Hierarchs would undoubtedly place upon them, Caesar, Loka, and the rest of the expeditionary force awaited their pickup from the gas mine before ultimately returning to the holy city of High Charity with the fleet. But to their shock, no evac ever appeared, and worse, they even witnessed Fell's fleet depart the system without them, leaving them alone forgotten, stranded on this ancient mine with no means of escape. And thus, little to their knowledge, the seeds of their heresy were planted. Sometime after the Halo's destruction, its monitor, 343 Guilty Spark, made his way to the gas mine where initially he was actually met with hostility from some of the jackals under Caesar and Loka's command. This was, however, quickly brought to an end when an elite recognized Spark as an oracle and took him to Caesar. Oh yeah, and the jackals that survived? Yeah, they, they had their hands cut off. <laughs> Yikes. When the leader met with the Oracle, he was told of the true purpose of the Halos, that they aren't holy relics, but rather weapons designed to destroy the Flood and to be activated should there be an outbreak. Caesar, as expected, completely snapped back at the Oracle, telling it that their religion dictated these rings were their salvation, but Spark only came back with more truth, saying that those who said that are quite frankly mad, and that the Halos are designed to destroy everything the Flood might feed on. Beginning to realize his life had been dedicated to a total lie, that his brothers had fallen in battle for a lie, Caesar quickly shut down all communications to the fleet. 
the Oracle protested, suggesting that all communication as to both Covenant and human forces should remain open in light of the danger posed by the Flood. But Caesar knew nobody was coming to help. They'd been forgotten, and now anybody who wasn't on the gas mine was a direct threat to their lives. Anything still alive in orbit is our enemy. The humans have very good cause to kill us on sight, and the knowledge you've shared with me casts doubt on the entire purpose of our covenant. If any of our ships remain above us, they are not the help you seek. Over the following days, Caesar informed Spark of the history of the Great Covenant Hegemony, from the origins of the Elites and their war with the Prophet, to the eventual signing of the Writ of Union and the formation of the Covenant, the history of the role of the Arbiter, and how other species were assimilated into the religion one by one over the course of 2,000 years. And Spark revealed that the Prophets, hundreds of thousands of years prior to the formation of the Covenant in the Foreigner era of the galaxy, were excellent manipulators, even back then, and that it was clear that that part of their species had never changed. He even went on to allude to Caesar that the prophets had lied about the divine power they claimed foreigner artifacts had. Artifacts, such as himself, that were almost certainly of no divine origin. When asked why no warrior, even the highest ranking and most intelligent, ever questioned the prophet's word, Caesar simply replied, Questioning was what brought shame to the word Arbiter long ago, Oracle. And just like that, Caesar Rephemy's devout beliefs, or once devout beliefs, in the Covenant faith were dealt their final blow. But Spark didn't stop there. He even made Caesar question the Covenant's view on the role of the Arbiter, saying how convenient it was that those who were made Arbiters and sent on missions that would almost certainly guarantee their death were warriors with extreme political influence. Influence that on some occasions was already being used to question the decisions and beliefs of the Hierarchs. Realising now that the Prophets had skewed this once noble and honourable traditional elite role of Arbiter into one that is simply used to dispose of those who could potentially reveal the truth of the religion and expose the Prophets for the liars they were, Caesar became enraged. The Prophets had treated the elites like fools, desecrated their traditions and their history with no respect nor regard for their life and yet still his brothers were too blinded by their faith to see it. He considered discreetly contacting Thel, his former supreme commander, the only one he could trust with such world-shattering knowledge, but came to the sad realisation that by now the prophets had almost certainly silenced him for his failure to protect the Halo. This only furthered his belief that he had no more allies beyond the gas mine, and that he would have to be the one to act upon this knowledge. But I will begin our fight, make others aware of the lies the prophets whisper in our ears, and soon we will find more who will take up our cause. However, Caesar and his men were fighting arguably the biggest uphill battle in the Halo universe since the Forerunner Flood War. They needed the best gear they could get, and when it came to audio, they looked no further than Raycon who are today's sponsors of this deep dive into their faction. The Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds are my earbud of choice for just about everything, from vibing to flood music to, well, I mean, what else would I listen to? When, why would I listen to anything else when I can listen to flood music? Especially, especially considering the E25's amazing audio quality, seamless Bluetooth pairing, comfy, compact design, and six hours of playtime. If you want to get a pair for yourself and vibe to flood music with me, then just go to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia and get 15% off your order. Just click the link at the top of the description. And the best part is, they start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. So, go to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia to get 15% off your order. Remember, you can just click the link at the top of the description. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now... Let's get back to our tale of heresy, a tale that's about to turn into a nightmare. In their efforts to spread the truth of the great journey across the galaxy, Caesar's message was intercepted by the Covenant. 
When the Hierarchs were informed, they quickly brandished him an enemy of their cause, an enemy of the entire religion, and made him the most wanted heretic in the galaxy, placing a bounty so big on his head it was fit for no mercenary or bounty hunter. This bounty was one destined to fall on the blade of an Arbiter. And what a coincidence it was that, for the first time in over 20 years, the Prophets had just appointed a new one. Hmm, it's almost as if Spark was right. I'm starting to fear that you're not very smart. I mean no offense. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your species. Caesar's worst fears were confirmed. The only person he thought he could trust was now a puppet of the Hierarchs, and his first mission was to silence his heresy. The Arbiter was sent to the gas mine as a part of a special operations task force, led by Commander Artas Vadami, who previously served under Thel as a part of his fleet, but now viewed his former Supreme Commander with little to no respect, thanks to his colossal failure. When they reached the mine, an aggressive maelstrom was forming in the atmosphere surrounding it, which provided the perfect cover for the team to infiltrate the construct and begin silencing the heretics with ease. When they reached the hangar, where Caesar's personal seraph was stored, they were met with sentinels, the holy warriors of the sacred rings, siding with the heretics, something that almost certainly begun to sow the seeds of doubt in the Arbiter's mind regarding the legitimacy of the religion. As they fought their way through the facility, the Arbiter first encountered Caesar, who ordered some of his elite warriors to deal with the strike force while he defended the Oracle. As they fought the Zealots, the heretics were heard shouting, his truth must not be silenced. But it was no use. The Arbiter followed Caesar in flight to another arm of the mine, and it was here where this simple counter-heresy operation would morph into a nightmare. It turned out that this facility was, in fact, not a gas mine, nor had it been for a very, very long time. Eons prior, Guilty Spark had overseen its transformation into a secret flood research facility, and following the firing of the Halo Array, it continued to harbour samples of the parasite, but strictly for research. However, its newest inhabitants cared little for that. It's unknown whether he did this intentionally or by accident, but Caesar unleashed the Flood to try and slow down his pursuers, inadvertently forcing his elites to fight in a two-front war, pushing their victory even further out of reach. Eventually, the Arbiter caught up with Caesar, who was mere seconds away from escaping the facility, now almost entirely consumed by the Parasite in his Seraph, and he demanded to know the truth proving he still respected his former Supreme Commander, despite the armor he was now forced to wear, Caesar declared he would rather die by the Arbiter's hand than have the Prophets lead him to slaughter, as they'd done for so many of his brothers, and for nothing. He ordered the Oracle to reveal the truth about the great journey to the Arbiter, but sadly, Deep down, Caesar knew that Thel was too far gone to accept the truth. At this point, he was basically another arm of the Hierarchs, and so, while he was distracted, he opened fire on his former leader. Using two hollow drones, he attempted to take the Arbiter out, but these drones and his Ranger harness proved useless against his extreme combat proficiency, and the Arbiter won the battle. And so, Caesar Rephime met his end in the same facility his faith died, and what little remained of his so-called heretic brothers were sent plummeting to the surface of Threshold. However, the words of heresy Caesar Rephime announced across the galaxy created a legacy that far surpassed his unfortunate death. The most notable case of this being the Arbiter, of course. After being told more or less the same information about the Great Journey from the Gravemind, from Chief, and again from Guilty Spark, Thel realized that he and his entire species had been forced to fight and die for a lie. A lie that Caesar had tried to reveal to him, but believed he was too far gone to listen. As we know, this then inspired Thel to fight in the Great Schism, form an alliance with humanity, and form the Swords of Sanghelios, purely to put an end to the Covenant once and for all. However, like I said, that wasn't the only instance of Sirius's words creating an impact outside of the gas mine. 
Within the expeditionary force he led to the mine was an elite who, sadly, we still don't know the name of, who was secretly transmitting the newly encountered truths about the Great Journey to his brother, Kola Balf, an elite ranger who, at the time, was serving the Covenant with honor and distinction. However, upon hearing the messages from his brother, his devotion to the Great Journey very quickly waned, and he was one of the first elites to turn on the prophets at the beginning of the Great Journey. Following the schism and the fall of the Covenant, the Arbiter actually met personally with Kola to inform him of his brother's death at the mine, and that it was carried out by his hand, while his vision was still shrouded by the prophet's lies. As an act of restitution, however, he offered Kola a position in the Swords of St. Helios, allowing him to carry forward his brother's legacy and to continue the fight he started to bring about a bloody end to all who broadcast the prophet's lies. As long as warriors of the Swords of St. Helios continue to draw breath, no Covenant warrior in the galaxy is safe from their bleed. And that, my friends, is the deepest dive there more than likely ever will be into the life of Caesar Rephime, the heretic leader, his faction, the truth they try to reveal to the galaxy, and their legacy. A truly, if you ask me, tragic tale. I mean, if Caesar had just held on to his faith in Thel for a few seconds longer, there's a high chance he'd still be alive and be a high key member of the Swords of St. Helios, and maybe even the Great Schism would have kicked off earlier and gone a different way. I mean, who knows? If only he didn't pull the trigger. You hate to see it. So, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done already. I make videos like this all the time, so if you don't want to miss out on any iconic Halo lore, then you really, you really just gotta hit that subscribe button. I mean, come on, it's the only way. Also, don't forget to go and follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hiddenxperia. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and I think that's all for today, I'm pretty sure. I wanna give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.